bless the Lord, bless the Lord. It is uh, Saturday evening. Been a little long in the, in the high chair. I wasn't really sure what the Lord wanted me to speak on. He's given me a lot of things to, uh, to chew on this week. Um, let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for yet another word, another birthing of a new thought and a new renewing of our minds. Father, we pray right now if there's anything within us that is not of you, that does not stand in agreement with you, that comes to destroy, disrupt, or disturb the things in you, we command that thing to move right now. Lord, we pray that you prepare our hearts for a word in season, a word that shall change our lives, a word that shall bring our minds to a place that we shall say no more. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord has really um, been working on me, and he gave me this word a long while back. And the word was on repentance. And in this word repentance lies a lot of where our discord or our disconnect from God is held. Let us turn to Mark the first chapter. We will start at the first verse and end at the eighth verse. In the beginning of the good news about Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah, the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. A voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare ye the way for the Lord. Make the crooked path straight for him. And so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist and he ate locusts and wild honey. And this was his message. After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Today's message, where the Lord speaks of repentance, the message actually sits in the baptism. I speak on this knowing that there are some that may read this or hear this or see this video and be in total controversy and total disagreement with what is about to be said. But in a prophecy of Jesus, there's a preparing that had to take place. Well, in the prophecy, it speaks of John the Baptist who prepares ye the way of the Lord. But there's an individual responsibility upon all of us to prepare our hearts so that the Lord may be able to, to reside there. To prepare our hearts so that our lives are pure enough or righteous enough or even clean enough to where he can come in and do the rest. There is a preparing of our hearts that says, I know he died for my sins. I know that he did this. And there's a responsibility that now falls on me to do something more than just receive the fact that salvation was free. 
considering we don't live perfect lives, considering we don't live in a perfect society, it becomes very difficult for us to take grasp of forgiveness. In a selfish world, in a selfish society, forgiveness is no longer needed by man, but is required by God. Well, why do you say that? Well, we still uphold the you steal my dog, I kill your cat mentality of the law. Because the law said, I don't have to forgive you. I don't have to have mercy upon you. I can get even. But as we prepare, either way, the Lord, our hearts for the Lord, our world, our lives for the Lord, we now step away from the law. You messed with my family, I get to mess with yours. Because the sin offering was given in the life of Jesus. What does that really have to do with baptism, Dwayne? Well, there's a cleansing that takes place in the baptism. Many people took baths in the river or in little tubs, but the river was a very frequent place for people to take baths at that time. However, John the Baptist was out here baptizing Submerging men under water as they confess their sins unto God. It was a form of cleansing. It was a spiritual act of cleansing. It was a spiritual representation of I will lower myself low enough to where I know that I messed up. I'm willing to admit I messed up. I take responsibility that I messed up. I don't have to be high and mighty when I mess up. I don't have to cover up what I messed up. Because the sin offering of Jesus says that you ain't going to stone me because I messed up. I was defiant. I was wrong. You ain't going to take my tongue because I lied. You're not going to chop my hands off because I was once a thief. You're not going to kill me and the woman that I slept with because there was an adulterous or fornicative act. So the world says now that this has taken place, there is no real reason for forgiveness. I've been forgiven. It's done. It's finished. That's what Jesus said. It's on the cross and it's finished. But John the Baptist was telling us in order to receive the gift of salvation, in order to receive the greatest act of kindness and love that we can ever obtain, that we can ever come into contact with, we had to prepare our hearts. We had to prepare ourselves in order to walk in the way of the Lord. Because we were made in his likeness and in his image. Which means that we look like him. We act like him. If we're in him, we sound like him. If we really try to operate in him for real, for real, and he's Lord of our lives, we even do the things that he would do. Well, there was an evidence in that because Jesus had not yet stepped into his ministry. But John the Baptist was the forerunner and he had. And he was this big, great man. Hold on. Stop, 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 stop. Many say the greatest prophet outside of Jesus Christ himself. Stop, stop, stop. But according to the scripture, he didn't look like this big, great man. He don't sound like this big, old, great man. He didn't act like this big, old, great man. This man had a very 
humble, simple, basic lifestyle. Real talk, if you think about it, just from hearing about his appearance, this man probably stunk. This man probably was repulsive to the average eye today. But he was the forerunner of Jesus. He was the chosen one to prepare men's hearts, to preach a gospel before the gospel was even lived. What was that gospel? It was the baptism of repentance. See, many people will get into this debate of baptism. Well, you got to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, Jesus wasn't born and he was baptizing. But he was baptizing in the name of God. He was baptizing because these people wanted to be closer to God. He was baptizing because these people wanted to be cleansed and seen whole by God. He was baptizing to bring forth something new in the lives of these people so that they could be delivered by God. Why do I keep saying this? Because man says, oh, well, for you to be saved and to go to heaven, you got to be baptized. Some say by the water. Some say by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Well, here's the problem. Until you are prepared by the way of the Lord, which is repentance, until you walk through a baptism of repentance, it's hard to walk in the ways of the Lord, let alone in the Spirit of the Lord. So help me now, O Holy Spirit, because we are not sorry. We are not sorry for the things that we've done. Why? Because we got caught? Because there's a punishment? There's a price to pay? Or are we sorry because we've upset the laws of God? The word of God says, if you love me, my laws are not burdensome. You will follow my laws. His word isn't burdensome because guess what? I mess up, God, man, I do it a lot. I do it a lot. But for real, I did this, I did this, I did this, and I need some help. I need some hope. I need some signs. I need some wonders. Lord, I just need you. I'm bringing these things to the table because these are elements of repentance. Repentance is one, recognizing the fact that you've done something wrong. Two, sorry for the action, not because of how it made you feel, but how it makes God feel. Three, recognizing the repercussions of your actions to the kingdom of God and how it may resonate in a different way. Four, turning from the action. Because I know that by me lying to Pastor so-and-so and him not trusting me to do something that I'm not really capable of doing, but I only lied because I wanted some recognition, because I wanted a place that I didn't belong. I wanted to be in this, or I wanted to hold on to that, and I wanted somebody to see me in a great place. Lord, I'm sorry. I tripped. Help me correct my wrong. Help me not to do this again. Lord, I can't do it by myself because if I could, I wouldn't have did it in the first place. The average Joe on the other end of that, that's in that religious state of mind right now. Yes, you can. All you have to do is say no. Well, problem being, guess what? How many times you lied to yourself and you didn't say no? How many times have you walked outside and said you look good in what you're wearing? And Lord knows you didn't show your rooter and your tutor and it wasn't pleasing. How many times have you lusted after somebody that was looking pretty darn good? But you ain't mine. God 
gave me eyes so I can see. But he also gave your heart to love him. Now what's your excuse? What about the person that you're gossiping about? And you didn't ran him through the mud and you did it in the name of Jesus. I was just telling the truth. Until the truth come back on you. And I realized that you was talking about such and such and such when you didn't have no business opening your mouth about it when you should have been praying about it. But you was under such an anointing. Oh, you been lied on God. Lord, I'm sorry that I lied on you. By me lying on you now, there's several people that don't trust you, but they weren't in great relationship with you. Your word says that woe unto the shepherd that lead the sheep astray. Woe unto that one that leads my little children astray. It's as if tying a stone, a millstone mill around his neck and plunging into the sea. Lord, I don't want to be that person. I don't want to do that. I don't want this to be the repercussions. Help me, Lord. See, you might think that I'm going off on the deep end, but watch this. Run some bath water, thump it, and watch the waves go out. Everything that you do affects something. Everything that you say affects something. For every response to hell's demand, it affects something. It's a domino effect. The Lord now says, by indulging in the baptism of repentance, by changing the ripple of the waves with your confession, with your change of heart, with your tenderness in relationship to him, you can now receive his son who brings a spirit upon you like no other. That will lead you and guide you and empower you and take you to a place beyond your wildest imagination. Allow you to see and hear things that you would have no clue about. This is a brand new baptism in him, Jesus Christ. But until we prepare our hearts truly, I mean literally, ring the Lord, ring to them that man, I'm tripping. Look at what I've done. Look at how I've done. I'm not telling you to condemn yourself. But if you never understand the repercussions of your actions, how can you ever be sorry for them? Confess your faults unto one another so that ye may be healed. Well, your heart is broken because you done did some things wrong and you got the repercussions of what you did wrong back to you and you can't now handle it and you're hurting. Lord, I talked about my wife. I talked about my husband. I didn't support them. So therefore, they did not support me and they left. I could not understand their feelings because I'd never been down that road. See, this is a repenting moment because now you did unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Oh, that's a commandment. When you realize that you haven't done that and you repent from it and realize the ripple effect of that thing, whoa, Lord, I am so sorry. I've been tripped. See, it's no longer, yeah, I'm sorry, and you go about your way. Because it was the polite thing to do. It was the right thing to do. The Lord cares less about the right thing to do. He wants you to do it with your heart. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Prepare your heart to receive salvation. Prepare your heart to be cleansed. So that when Jesus comes in, he has a whole lot of room to operate. It's difficult to hear God, to hear Jesus, when everything is all cluttered up in your heart. It's difficult to 
hear Jesus when you're stuck on religion of I just want to be dipped in the water. Oh, the water. How about this? Now that you've been dipped in the water and you did your symbolic spiritual cleaning, do it for real. And watch the baptism of the Holy Ghost come forth. And then you begin to walk in power. I'm talking power. I ain't talking about the Lord said, no, I don't want to hear all that. I'm talking about power. Where you can speak to a thing and it moves. Where you can walk into a room and the atmosphere changes. I'm talking about power where you can go and lay hands on the sick and they receive the very Holy Ghost inside of you that heals them. Power. I end on that note. I'm not going to go any further because there's yet another lesson behind that. And we'll call it part two. We'll call it repentance part two. You'll see it. I have the same clothes on. I'm going to do it right behind this one. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now. If indeed there's anything that we fail to realize, recognize, or bring to the altar or the throne of God. We pray right now, Lord, that you forgive us for that thing. That you help us to forgive ourselves so that we would not be shamed to bring that thing unto you and lay it at your feet. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now for the courage and the empowerment to stand up and face and confess unto you. Not only our faults, but our fears, our struggles, our wants and our desires. Father, we know that you listen. We know that you hear. We know that you move on our behalf. But on this day, Father, I pray for your power. I pray for your spirit. I pray for your courage. I pray for your strength for each and every person listening or watching today. That they may be able to bring that thing to you wholeheartedly like never before. And that that thing stays right there at your feet that it will no longer be picked back up in condemning fashion that the full process of repentance run its course for you are omnipresent you are all knowing you are all powerful and we bless you Lord and we bless your name and we thank you for a new mindset we thank you for the completion we thank you right now for the forgiveness. We thank you right now for the healing. We thank you right now for the progress. We thank you right now for all that you've done. We thank you right now because you are God and God alone and that you can change the situation. So Lord, we bless your name. We bless you. We bless you for our very lives and our very existence. But most of all, we bless you because you've never leave. You've never left us. You've never forsaken us. You just waited on us to step into the right pool of baptism so that we may become closer to you. In Jesus' name, we pray that a greater revelation come about from this very word, from this very prayer, from this very time. Amen and amen. Well, be looking out for it. It'll be a repentance one and a repentance two. Bless his name. Till the next time. Bye.